Hello, and welcome to this video on how to use a Confluence database to manage your FAQ or frequently asked questions. If you're not familiar with a Confluence database, don't worry, I'll cover some of the basics here, or you can check out the video up here for a more in-depth view on the features. But basically, a database is just like a table in Confluence. However, it's got a lot of extra features that make it very useful for managing and storing information. I've used them for things like an FAQ, but also managing projects, keeping track of what pages need to be updated and more. But here we're going to focus in on how we can use it to manage our frequently asked questions. We're going to take a look at how we can use it to structure these asked questions, but also provide users more information about them when they were last updated, a link to more information, and more. So, let's jump in and see what they look like. Here I'm in a premium version of Confluence Cloud, but as long as you have access to databases, you'll be able to do all of this in your version of Confluence. I'm just going to go to my space, and the first thing I'm going to do is just create some new content with the Create button. And then I'll select Database. And here I have a brand new database. The first thing I'm going to do is just give it a name. I'll call it FAQ. And right away, it's asking me if I want to connect it to anything. For now, I'm not going to actually connect it to Jira, Confluence, or import any information. I'm just going to start with a nice blank database. And I start out with these three columns. Now this first column, I'm just going to call question. And this is where I'll list out every question that this FAQ will answer. For example, I might have a question, how do I import information? And from here, I would just add any question that I would like to answer in here. Now in this particular example, I'm going to include a mix of different types of questions. So here I have some about maybe information technology and others about human resources. And that's where this next field, the tag field, comes in. The tags in a database are kind of like labels. They're just a piece of information we can attach to it. So I'm going to make a tag for IT, and I'll create it, and I'll add that to each of the questions that I think relate to IT. And then I'll have another one for HR. And you'll notice it also color codes them, so it draws the eye a bit, makes it easier to see. And then I'll just click in the name of this field, tag field, and name it type of question. You might also call it category or team, but this is what will help someone figure out, oh, this question relates to IT or HR or engineering or any other type of question you can come up with. Now this user field could be useful. Maybe I put in who asked the question. That might be interesting to track. Or maybe I put in who owns answering it. But right now, I'm just going to get rid of this field. And I'm going to add a few more fields, because not only do I want to track the questions that we have, I need to track, was it answered? And in this example, I'm going to link the question to a specific page in Confluence that has the answer. So I'm going to add this page link. I'll give it some name, maybe answer. And I'm going to add enable page creation. Now, this is a great feature because this will allow someone to come to the database, realize there's a question missing an answer, and then make a page with the answer that will get linked here. So I'm going to have a parent page, and I would select where I want all of these answers to go, maybe overview, but of course this could be any page. And then the initial content, I just want to leave it as display entry on page. I could allow multi select. So if there are multiple pages that answer this question, I might check that box. And I might even add a field description, which I can do to any field in here. Just to give folks a little bit more information when they come to this. So now I can close out, answer. And we'll see when I click in here, I can link it to any page that exists in Confluence. So I might have an page already that answers this question. Import example. And maybe I have an answer here for create a page. And I'll see if I have anything for policies. Now this search is great because it lets me very quickly go through and figure out, oh, there is a page about policies. Now I'm going to leave this last one blank for a minute, but I do have that option if I need to to create a page. If I don't see something here, if I look for onboarding, we'll see that this top option allows me to create that page. This is a great way to shorten the distance if someone has an answer. If they're looking at this FAQ and they realize, hey, I know how to onboard someone. I'll just make the page for it and add it in there. 
But for the rest of this example, I'll leave this one blank to show you some other features that we can use to make this FAQ database even more powerful. I will add a few more columns. I'm going to scroll down under Page, and I'm going to go to Page Details. Now, I like to add this because I have this answer, Import Example, but I want to share more information about it. So here, I go to Page Link, and it's saying, go find the page in the Answer column and give me some information about it. So I'll select Answer, and you'll notice it just drops in the Created At. So this could be useful. My team might need to know, when was this Import Example page created? That might tell them, hey, it's a bit out of date. I have to go update it. I'm going to change this, though, and instead say who it's owned by. Now, in Confluence, the page owner is the person who is responsible for updating and maintaining that information. So by including this right here, if someone has questions, they can quickly go to Robert, in this case, and ask them for help or for more information. I'm going to rename this field and call it Answer Owner. And I'm going to add a quick description just so folks know what it is. And then I'll add another field. So I think it's very useful for someone to have knowledge about who the answer owner is, but I want to add another page details. I'm going to add this same page link because I want to know about the answer document, but then I'm going to change it to updated at. So this tells me the last time that answer was updated. Again, this is very important because if this is very far in the past, for example, February, that was five months ago, six months ago, maybe Robert should go update this page. And I'll just change this field name to well, answer last updated. So now that I've got all this information about the answer owner, there is another column I could add to make this FAQ a bit more useful. So I'll add a new column and I'll go right back to page details. I'll select the same exact page link and then I'm going to change the detail to be the excerpt. Now, an excerpt is a macro that sits on a page that lets you pull information off of it and display it somewhere else. In this case, the excerpt is a very quick answer to the question. So if the question was, how do I import something, the excerpt might be one line about it. So depending on how you structure the pages you're linking here, you could also surface a very quick answer to whatever that individual needs to learn by using this excerpt. This, again, helps shorten that distance between having a question and getting your answer. And of course, if someone is curious, they can click on the answer link and get even more information. So the only thing I'll do here is rename this, maybe quick answer, and there we go. In just a few minutes, I already have a very useful FAQ knowledge base. Someone can come in here and look for their question, find the answer, and know who to go to if they need help. But there's even more I can do with this database. Similar to a spreadsheet, I can save specific views of this. So by default, it's all entries. But I'm going to click this Add View. Now this gives me some great options. Maybe I want to add a view that is just IT questions. And I can go to Filter. And this will save a filter. So I'll select Type of Question. And I'll say Is IT. And I'll click Update View. And now when someone comes to this FAQ, they can just click on IT questions. And even neater, if you look up in the URL, this URL is unique. It's saying there's a saved view. So if I bookmark this, or if I share this with someone else that I work with who has access, they can go straight to just the IT questions. They won't have to go through all of the HR and engineering and recruiting and everything else. They can just go to this saved bookmark. Now I could repeat this with every type of question. Maybe I need one just for HR. Go to my filter, change it to HR. And now I have one that only goes to HR. And maybe I want one for unanswered questions. I like to use this one because it can encourage folks to go add answers if they don't have them. So here I would change it to answer. And I would say is empty because that means there's no answer for it. So I'll update this view. And now someone coming in can see a list of these questions. Or I could even save one that is unanswered HR questions. And my HR team looks at that every month or unanswered IT. And then someone could come in here, realize there's no information about onboarding and use that same create the page. 
So this is a great way to help flag things that have to be updated that we don't have an answer for yet. And once that's updated, it would be sorted to the appropriate tab. Now, once I have these views, I do have some options. If I click on IT questions, I have a dropdown. I could make this the default. I wouldn't want to do that if I have a kind of generic FAQ that everyone can see. But if I have other ways of sorting it, for example, answered questions, maybe that's the default. And then folks won't see the unanswered questions. The other thing that folks can do when they come here is they can just click add entry and just add their question. So I would need to show my team how to do this, but they could very easily just click add entry, type in their question, and that's it. They can add their questions here and then we take a look at them every week and we make sure that they get the answers they need. There are a few more things I can do though with these filters. If I go back to edit unanswered questions, I realize that these columns are always going to be blank because the question isn't answered. So I might want to go in and click on hide field and get rid of the answer last updated and answer owner columns. And that's because they're never going to be filled in. I do want to leave that answer though, because someone could go in and try and find it and then click that button to add the page directly. But this is a much cleaner view. Now that's unique to that view though. So the other pages will still have answer owner and answer last updated. There is another way we can visualize this. We have cards and boards. Personally, I don't do this when I do an FAQ because I like the FAQ to look more like a table. It's easier for folks to scroll and look through, um, but you can display it differently. Now, databases do support search. So if this FAQ gets very long, someone could also come up here and just type in information or any keyword, and that will show just the questions related to what they're looking for. This again is another powerful way to shorten the distance between someone asking and someone finding the information that they need. And there is another great feature for managing our FAQ. If we don't have one giant FAQ, maybe we have multiple ones by team or by area, you can copy the structure of your database. So clicking this will make a new database with the same columns for you. This makes it very easy to spin up a new FAQ in the space that you need it that has the same structure. So it makes it very easy to build another one in another area that someone could get access to. So that is how to build a frequently asked questions database in Confluence. I found it a great way to help teams manage their information. Prior to this, I would tend to have a page structure and then use something like include child or import by label to show the list of questions. This can be a bit clunky though. It can be hard to search through. You can't tag it. It's hard to know who owns things. So that can certainly work. But by putting things in a database, it's easier for folks to find. There's a built-in search just for that page. Folks can easily add questions or answers, and you have more control over what information is there, and you can share those saved views. So I really hope you found this useful. Thank you for taking time to learn about it with me. If you liked it, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, and share it with other folks who may find it interesting. Also, please drop your comments and questions down below. I created this video because someone asked, hey, what is it like using an FAQ for databases? So let me know what else you think is interesting or want to learn about. Thanks again for taking time to join me, and I'm looking forward to seeing you in another one of these videos soon. Mm -hmm.